One minor thing that is worth pointing out because I, it's important to me and it may be important to others is the fact that the G2 has an internal power supply and a really long power cable which I find very handy and a real power switch uh, and these three things seem really minor but uh, it really adds up to uh, a, a better user experience. Possibly my most favorite feature of the Clavia synths is the pitch stick. I have no idea why other manufacturers don't also use this technology. Um, the thing that's so great about it is that there's no dead spot on the pitch stick and this is one of the main reasons I actually ended up with a Nord Modular G2 is because I wanted some Clavia synthesizer that had that little bit of controller hardware on it. Um, what this allows you to do is create vibrato like a violin player would play. Um, typically if you're using like a wheel or a paddle, because of the dead spot you have to produce vibrato that's above you know, the, the dead spots, like you're working around it above or sometimes below. You don't have to worry about that with the pitch stick. So you can play it like a normal, you know, uh, paddle or whatever. But you can also, you know, create uh, vibrato type effects just by wiggling your finger. And you don't have to worry about the dead spot. Uh, the other thing that's interesting about it is right now I have it set to two semitones and if you play a wheel or a paddle I mean this makes all the difference in the feel of the pitch stick. It doesn't seem to matter with this particular controller. I can change this from two semitones and I'm going to change this all the way up to an octave so I can move the pitch in, in a full octave in both directions but it doesn't affect my ability to play very fine degrees of pitch control. Um, right now, this keyboard is not connected to a computer. Obviously, if you have a G2, you're probably interested in making your own patches and using it as a virtual modular or a digital modular. Um, but it's designed to be used in a performance situation. That means that you can, can use it not connected to the computer. And in this operation, it works just like a normal synthesizer. You can uh, select patches, and we'll find something different. I don't know what this is. We'll load it. And you can see that I have eight different variations on this patch. Now, what we normally think of as patches uh, on a synthesizer are kind of different because when you're loading a patch, you're actually loading an entire synthesis architecture. And the variations are the different, you know, uh, combinations of the parameters of that patch. So we can load something else here. This is a landscape patch. Maybe just effects. Now let's find something different. Are you in? All right, this is a brass patch. So you can see that variations allow uh, useful combinations of patches with one synthesis architecture just by loading up one single patch. Another nice aspect of the standalone nature of the Nord Modular G2 is the fact that you can edit virtually any of these parameters that you bring forth uh, with these soft knobs and the nice little labels that are across the top. It looks like there's only eight knobs, but actually there's five parameter pages and there's three banks of those so five times three times eight is 120 parameters that you can bring forward and this is all user defined it could be anything it could be normal synthesis parameters it could be a step sequencer it could be anything um, so for example we can edit um, the filter this arpeggio we can also have a filter Envelope. 
so the point is that with uh, 120 parameters it, for any given patch architecture uh, is a lot of editing that can take place without being coupled to a computer. In addition to the rear panel quarter inch inputs that are on the back of the G2, uh, the G2 can be used as a effects processor for uh, any sort of audio signal that you can put in through the rear inputs, but in addition to that, it also has a XLR mic input. And this is nice if you don't want to have to bring around a microphone preamp or mixer if you don't need one, and then make those, patch those connections in externally. All you need to do is plug in an XLR cable on the back, plug your microphone in, and call up a vocoder patch for all your robot voice needs in this one little box. So, for example, Hey, check this out. I'm using vocoder on the Nord Modular G2. Is it cool? Yes, it is. Okay, now what we're going to do is use the software to quickly create a basic subtractive synthesis track. Uh, so, we'll need an oscillator. And we'll just grab the uh, oscillator C here. And then we'll need, uh, well, let's, let's choose an output, and we'll just hear what that sounds like. So here we have a sine wave going out directly to the output. That's not really doing anything interesting, so uh, let's get the output. First, let's get a, uh, an envelope. And one interesting thing here is that there's a VCA that's sort of implied. So now I can play that with the keyboard. Uh, let's choose a waveform that's you know, filterable. So we'll choose a saw. And that's a little bit better. And speaking of filters, let's uh, grab a filter and put that in there. So I'll grab this Nord filter, put that there. Disconnect the cable. Plug that in there, and then that in there. And now we should have a filter that we can effective. Um, it would be kind of nice if we had an envelope for the filter, so let's grab another envelope, ABSR, and then we'll take the output of the envelope to modify the filter. We'll bring that in right there. And so we can now have the envelope controlling the filter. Okay, now that we've done that, um, we can uh, start assigning some parameters to these knobs here, and that's pretty easily done. Uh, all you need to do is control click on a module and say, uh, I want to assign this to page A, and I'll assign the filter to page B, and do the envelopes on page C1, and then page C2. Now, over here, let's see where are we, page C, that's ADSR1 and ADSR2.